Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Ludwig or Martyr Ligarius from Bloodborne, and like and subscribe for better connections next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building one of my favorite Pokemon, Lucario. I know that's kind of a basic choice, but he's a jackal whose fighting is so good he can throw energy blasts and read minds. Lucario was supposed to be a legendary Pokemon, but then they gave him a cuter baby version, and legendaries don't have lower forms. But then they gave him a mega form, and then they gave you a free mega Lucario in Gen 6, making an easy game even easier. Hence, you know, the basic thing. Basic is fine though, cheese pizza's delicious, and iron fight dog is rad. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be clear. This isn't Smash Lucario for two reasons. One, Lucario doesn't have any sort of revenge mechanic in Pokemon other than the move counter. It's actually kind of weird that Lucario has revenge when all the other starters do have revenge-based abilities with Blaze, Torrent, and Overgrow, and they don't in Smash. The other reason is D&D doesn't have revenge mechanics. Abilities that activate below half health generally end up healing you. They don't help you deal extra damage. So working with Pokemon Lucario, what do we get? Well, Aura Sphere never misses. It's not charged up, it's an attack that can't miss. Next, we need empathy. We need so much empathy that we can speak to people, which means this is a Pokemon you can actually play 100% in character in a D&D game without being the most annoying player ever. Finally, we need to go Mega, with a buff that takes us from a very good Pokemon to an absurdly good Pokemon. For stats, we'll be using the standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch your multi-classing minimums. We're doing this because Lucario is a very balanced Pokemon. Put your strength, intelligence, and wisdom at 14. You need to hit hard, but also understand your fellow Pokemon and have a solid special attack stat. Dexterity, Constitution, and Charisma can drop to 10. Your speed and HP are only okay, and even if you're better at communicating than most Pokemon, that's still a pretty low bar. There still isn't a dog race in D&D, so I bet you think we're going custom lineage, right? But Lucario is a steel type, meaning that there's some iron cooked into them. So, we'll go for Warforged. That'll give you plus 2 Constitution and plus 1 to another stat, like strength. Your Constructed Resilience gives you advantage on saves against being poisoned and resistance to poison damage. You don't need to eat, drink, or sleep, and can instead take a sentry's rest, staying alert but still for 6 hours. Just take some time in the Pokemon Center. The best part of Warforged is Integrated Protection, letting you merge with armor you're proficient with and add one to your AC with it. Get the heaviest stuff for the best AC. You get a free skill of your choice, go for Persuasion, and take the Athlete background for Athletics and Acrobatics. You used to be just a fighting type until you became good friends with a person and got muscles made of literal steel because of that? Speaking of fighting types, fighters. I think most people think Monk actually works better for a fighting type, but not this time. You get two skills from the fighter list, like Insight and Perception. Insight is the really important one. You need to feel like Spider-Man, if you're on a team with Spider-Man, that is. You get a fighting style like Unarmed Fighting, letting you deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier with your unarmed attacks, and 1d8 with two free hands. Lucario doesn't use weapons, except in Smash, but I would hate to see the Smash version of Lucario. Why Tulak make Smash version of character? You also get a second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest for a little orange berry at the beginning, or a citrus berry by the end of things. Second level fighters get Action Surge, letting you make two actions per round once per short rest for some speed that I might even call extreme. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype, and Eldritch Knight is a great way to get some special attacks on your fighting type. You get two cantrips from the wizard list. Message lets you whisper to someone 120 feet away, and they can whisper back for some basic telepathic communication. Sword Burst lets you force a dexterity saving throw on creatures within 5 feet of you, dealing 1d6 force damage to those that fail. It's a melee attack that can break through physical resistances, I'll call that a metal claw. Your first level spells have to be Abjuration or Evocation with one exception. Shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction. Spamming Protect is annoying, don't do it too much. Magic Missile shoots off 3 darts that automatically hit, dealing 1d4 plus 1 force damage each. Aim that all at one person, and you're dealing 3d4 plus 3 force damage, which might not be quite as much as you can deal with your attacks, but it will always hit. Close combat is riskier, but does more damage. Aura Sphere is consistent, but doesn't hit as hard. For your spell from any school, I don't know, Long Strider. We don't really need anything yet, and we'll swap it out later. Long Strider adds 10 feet to a creature's movement speed, just run faster. You also get Weapon Bond, letting you return a weapon to your hand as a bonus action that you've bonded with, which might seem weird since Lucario doesn't use weapons, but Bone Rush is a multi-hit move and it's something Lucario gets, so call a quarterstaff a bone and boom, you're Russian. Get some vodka or something like that to celebrate. Dosvidanya. 
Fourth level fighters get another ability score improvement or a feat. The telepathic feat gives you plus one to a soft stat, like wisdom. You can telepathically speak to any creature within 60 feet of you, and you can cast detect thoughts once per long rest for free, and later with spell slots you'd get at second level. That'll let you read surface level thoughts, and you can dive deeper into people's thoughts if they fail a wisdom saving throw. Last for a minute, depending on your concentration, really use that empathy. You're going to understand your friends so hard. You can also grab another first level spell like protection from evil and good, which gives aberrations, celestials, elementals, fiends, fey, and undead disadvantage on attacks against your chosen ally and they can't charm possess or frighten them as a steel type you resist fairy type moves from fey and as a fighting type you resist dark type moves from fiends Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one, and even four with an action surge. That should really boost that close combat damage, or you could use it to aura sphere and force palm in the same round, even though we don't have force palm just yet. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement or a feat. We're going to grab the skill expert feat, letting you raise a stat by one for even more wisdom, expertise in a skill like insight to double your proficiency bonus with the skill for maximum empathy, and one more skill, I'd say survival, to track people. Your empathy extends out to feel creatures that are far away, probably makes you a pretty good hunter. Actually, I know it does. There's a Pokedex entry that basically comes down to you feel people's emotions and use it to hunt them and kill them and eat them. Pretty, pretty dark. 7th level Eldritch Knights get War Magic, letting you attack as a bonus action after you've used a cantrip with your action so you can message someone and punch someone in the same round. Communicating with a trainer is an important part of battling. You can also learn 2nd level spells, Shatter Force is a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail. Constructs and creatures made of inorganic material have disadvantage on the saving throw, so it should be super effective when you use this focused blast on a steel type. 8th level fighters get another ability score improvement, let's start working on our strength modifier because that's something we actually want to use in combat. I think role-playing is more important, so I wanted the empathy first. If you care more about combat, that sounds boring. That's like 30% of the game at most. Ew. Not to yuck your yum, but yuck. You can also learn another spell from any list. Old person forces a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. Now that is a forceful palm. Actually, it's more like glare at this point, but we're gonna call it force palm. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll failed saving throw once per short rest. It's kind of a rubber band mechanic. Since it should keep you alive a little bit longer, than the other Pokemon. 10th level Eldritch Knights get Eldritch Strikes, meaning that creatures you hit with an attack have disadvantage on your saving throws like Hold Person. So now we have a Force Palm. You also get another spell, we'll grab Earth Tremor from the first level, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 1d6 bludgeoning damage to those that fail and knocking them prone, then turns that area into difficult terrain, lowering their speed as you bulldoze them. Are you liking all these Pokemon move name jokes? I hope so. 11th level fighters get another extra attack. That's three attacks per round, six attacks with an action surge, so even if your strength isn't as high as I'd like it to be yet, you can still deal some serious damage. You can also grab another spell. Darkness creates a 15 foot radius of darkness that not even dark vision can see through, which does include you, but it could be useful if you need to make a pulse of dark to get away. 12th level fighters get to deal a little bit more damage by bumping their strength up with an ability score improvement. I wish we could cap it off here, but we can do it in a second. Fighter get a lot of ability scores. 13th level fighters get another use of Indomitable, which is nice, but I always struggle to talk about it three times in a fighter build, so I'm glad you also learned third level spells here as an Eldritch Knight. Sending is Evocation, which is really weird, but I'll take it. That means you can deliver a message of 25 words or lower to another creature on the same plane or on another plane with a 5% failure rate. That's some long range empathy, which sounds like a lo-fi playlist. Long range empathy to study to. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength, and start working on your intelligence for better special attacks. You can also grab another spell from any list, so it's time to get Mega Lucario going with Haste. That'll add 2 to your AC, double your movement speed, give you advantage on dexterity saving throws, and an extra action to dash, disengage, hide, use an object, or make an attack. That's 4 attacks with the standard action, or 7 with your action surge. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration, and when it ends, you have to take a round off of actions and reactions, which is sort of like flinching. Not really in character, so don't drop concentration, obviously. 15th level Eldritch Knights get Arcane Charge, letting you teleport 30 feet when you use your action surge, so now you're extreme speed lets you teleport that's what i call a quick attack that's worse than extreme speed 16th level fighters get another ability score improvement push your intelligence modifier up for harder to resist saving throws on forced palm or shatter we're also going to swap out long strider i know that hurts everyone all of you love long strider so much and never complain about it but we're going to grab vampiric touch letting you make a melee spell attack that deals 3d6 necrotic damage as an action and heal half that amount for a punch that would drain you can do this every round for up to a minute depending on your concentration it doesn't deal as much damage as haste will end up doing but it could keep you alive longer 
up to you how you want to play. 17th level fighters get a second use of action surge and a third use of indomitable. You know what both of those things do, but two teleports and six to seven hit combos two rounds in a row is pretty dang fun. Eldritch Knights really do take advantage of action surge better than other fighters. 18th level Eldritch Knights get improved war magic, letting you cast a spell of first level or higher and make an attack as a bonus action instead of just a cantrip. That means you can hold a person and get your critical hits off when they're paralyzed all in the same round. 19th level fighters get another ability score improvement. It's a shame we can't cap off our intelligence modifier, so you might as well get the resilient feat for intelligence to help you with the saving throws by adding your proficiency bonus to them. You can also learn 4th level spells, and stone skin will make you a better steel type, giving you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour depending on your concentration. Normal type moves just aren't going to be very effective against you. Our capstone is the 20th level fighter for another extra attack. That's 4 per round, or 8 with an action surge, or 9 with a hasted action. For your final spell, locate creature lets you find either a specific creature or a type of creature you're familiar with that's within 1,000 feet of you, and if it's moving, you know what direction it's moving in for an hour, depending on your concentration. I think it's worth noting, Eldritch Knights get four spells from any school that they can pick, which is the same number of moves that you can choose for your Pokemon. That's kind of fun. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, 4 attacks per round is fun, 8 attacks twice per day is even more fun, and 9 attacks per round twice a day is just bananas. Haste on a Warforge also makes you pretty dang hard to hit, with 21 base AC and up to 26 with a shield spell. Finally, you're excellent at communication, with big insight to not just talk to people telepathically, but really understand where they're coming from. For weaknesses, you don't actually have all that much HP, somewhere around 120, so if someone finds a way to hit you, that could be an issue. Speaking of, your dexterity also isn't great, so fireballs could be super effective against you. Finally, you didn't get to cap off your intelligence modifier even though you technically could with the telepathic and skill expert boosts, but it would just feel weird to be a super empathy Pokemon and only have plus 2 wisdom. Because feelings matter, and I have a feeling you're gonna like this build. Go Mega Lucario, get your close combat on, and use those auras to your advantage. Just watch out for any fire, it would be a shame if you entered up charred dizard charred charred dizard that's the ending joke thanks for watching if you like the video subscribe for more we make two videos every week join the patreon to vote for martyr Ligarius or ludwig from bloodborne and sub to tulak and mango to watch us play bloodborne and pokemon we really have range